everybody, it's Ben in Beta. And today I have a two-part video for you. First, I wanted to talk about the gas mileage that I got from Colorado all the way to Wisconsin. So I've got a little update about that. And then I'm also at Lead Car Toyota in Wausau, Wisconsin. And the reason for that is I'm due for my 5,000 mile service. So they're doing that as well as an oil change. I was gonna try to get the oil analyzed, but honestly, I just didn't have time between all the travel and everything to figure that all out. So I'm not gonna do that this round, maybe at the 10,000 miles, I'll do that. But the other reason that I'm here is last week, Toyota came out with a Toyota service bulletin for the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. And for certain VIN numbers, early ones specifically, there are transmission issues that could require the transmission to be completely replaced. And my VIN does fall into that category. So basically they'll be looking for certain error codes to see if any of those have been thrown to indicate that the transmission should be replaced. We're gonna check that out today, but there's a good chance that I won't actually have anything done on it right now. Um, and hopefully if there are problems, Toyota will replace it, but we'll talk about that today as well. And I am beginning my trip basically back to my hometown. The initial leg today is about 985 miles, something like that. I've already ticked off a little over 100 at this point. I'm nearing Nebraska, so I got through Denver, which is nice as well. And uh, so far, so good. Trip's going pretty smooth. I got up pretty nice and early to get around all the traffic, and uh, things are going pretty well. Let's take a look at the gas mileage for the first part of the trip, getting out of the mountains, basically, and heading towards Nebraska. So basically, I'm looking at about 21.3, a little over 21, which is pretty decent. You can see that all my tire pressures are right around 33. So 21.3 is not not too bad, honestly, and we'll see if that gets better or worse as we go along. Unfortunately, I think we're going to get a headwind later in the day, which won't help things, but that's all right. See what it is. It's a really pretty sunrise this morning. And then you might recall that I reset the gas mileage computer about a week ago. So we're currently at about 19.8 miles per gallon from about a week ago. So that's up about two miles per gallon, but uh, we'll see how it goes for the rest of the trip. I'll try to update after a couple different tank fill-ups just to see if it changes as we go along. But so far, not too bad, over 21 miles per gallon. That's better than 17, so I'll take it. All right, so I filled up and I'm now in the middle of Nebraska. And unfortunately, as I was hoping wouldn't happen, we ran into some pretty serious winds, which are probably sustained around 20 miles an hour, which means the gas mileage isn't great. We got 18.3 on this tank of gas, not awesome. And then the overall mileage, since I reset the computer, we're at like 19. But that's what happens when you run into a stiff wind. So we'll just have to deal with it the best we can. But that's a quick update on the gas mileage thus far going through Nebraska. Update, I didn't take any video of the last tank, but it wasn't as good. We had a lot of wind. The last tank was about 17.9 miles per gallon, and I was in the low 16s for about the first quarter tank. I filled up 40 miles ago, and now we're back up to about 20. It's still windy, but not nearly as windy, and it does seem like it's maybe not in our face anymore which is nice. Overall mileage per gallon now is 18.7, which is higher than it ever was with the tent and everything. So that is good news, but uh, we'll see if it keeps increasing as we get closer to Wisconsin or not. All right, uh, we had our last two Phillips. The tank before this one, I was right around 20 miles per gallon, even with the wind. So just a little under like 19.8 and this tank, it's pretty much the same. I'm right about 19.9. And uh, overall, since again last weekend, basically, 19 miles per gallon, I have about 100 miles left or so in the journey so far. We'll see what it is when we pull in at the end. Uh, and then I have to go another about three and a half hours on like Sunday or Monday to get all the way back home. But I'll be at Brian's in a little bit and we can kind of see where the uh, gas mileage ended up. A couple things I would say long trip wise about the Tacoma. The steering system, it can be annoying when it like chimes to tell you to touch the steering wheel, even though you are touching the steering wheel. It really does help take a lot of like the cognitive load of driving off of you a little bit and makes driving pretty pleasant. The seats are really pretty comfortable. I still am not sure if the cloth seats might actually be better and more comfortable for a longer trip because these are a little harder than the cloth seats. 
but I've been able to stay very comfortable for the whole 900 miles that I've gone so far, and that's been good. All the other driver's assistance technology has been great. I did use the camera to check the bed a couple times. I think it's really cool to be able to see what's going on with your cargo at any moment, make sure things aren't sliding around, that your ties haven't come loose, that kind of stuff. So that's been pretty cool as well. Sound system's been good. I've been able to listen to audiobooks and music the entire time, and I'm able to hear everything just fine, even when the wind was really bad. So the sound dampening and everything inside the vehicle was great for that too. So long trip wise, this is a pretty nice vehicle if you're in the front seats, and I think Rue is happy in the back as well. So she's, she's not complained. She's been sleeping the entire time, just like she normally does. So she must be happy. Again, other driver's assistant stuff, like when somebody approaches on your side and uh, they get into your blind spot, which should be right about there. That's always helpful too. And then um, the rear view mirror is also fantastic. I really do like this. Although I have noticed that sometimes certain lights look like they're flashing. So it kind of sometimes looks as if police behind you or something like that when there aren't. The digital rear view mirror along with the other safety features and things just gives you a really good view around the vehicle and I feel super safe. And uh, the other thing I would note is I took like an hour long call today and the system was very clear. I was able to hear the other party and they were able to hear me really well. So just an update on like, again, long trips, talking to people, radio, everything's worked really well. I was hoping for a little bit better gas mileage, I would say, than I got, but it was really windy today, uh, probably over 20 miles an hour for a good chunk of the ride. But I'll give a last update once I arrive at Brian's place. All right, so we finished the leg of the journey with 20.9 miles per gallon and an overall 19.3 from Colorado to Wisconsin. But it's been a long journey and I'm ready to get out of the car now. So that's what we got for gas mileage. All right, so the final mileage all the way back home was 19.4 miles per gallon. I ended up with about 20.3 in this last tank. So that's where we are for the last, I don't know, about maybe 1,200 miles or something like that total mileage. But that's what it was from Colorado all the way back to my home in Wisconsin for gas mileage. With the tent off and the Kuat rack in a low position, the vehicle is loaded down, so we'll see how it goes for the next month while I'm here, if this gets better or worse. All right, so was the transmission replaced in my 2024 Toyota Tacoma? The answer is no, it was not. So they found absolutely none of the codes that would have triggered the replacement of the transmission. The tech told me they found no codes at all, which is good news for my truck. But how does that make me feel? And I guess the answer there is, well, I'm not sure. On the one hand, I'm definitely glad that there were no problem, but I think I would have preferred that Toyota just said, you know what, we think there could be a problem here and losing your transmission is a big deal. So we're gonna go ahead and just replace all of these like they did with the Tundra engines. I can understand why they might not want to do that. It's expensive, but for the price I paid for the truck, it would just give you peace of mind because now you're always gonna be wondering, well, is my transmission gonna go out at some point? And the reality is this, like if it goes out while I'm just driving around town, it wouldn't be catastrophic. I don't have another vehicle. It would be a pain in the butt and I wouldn't be very happy, but it wouldn't be life or death. If it goes out when we're headed back to Colorado, kind of the same thing. It wouldn't be great. It wouldn't be convenient. I wouldn't be very happy, but it wouldn't be life or death. If my transmission had major issues while we were out overlanding in the middle of nowhere, that might be a different story. While I do have a Zolio device and I can get help if I need it, it would be much more expensive to have somebody like Matt's Off-Road Recovery come out and pick up my truck from the trail and bring it all the way back. And I would expect that Toyota would be paying for that if it happened. I don't know if that's what they think they would be doing, but that would be my expectation. And so I think that's kind of the big deal there. My biggest worry would be that it actually went out or had problems when we were in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. But that's where we are right now, so am I mad? No. Am I concerned? Not really, but do I have complete peace of mind? I would say no. And I'm not giving Toyota a pass on anything like that. I do wish they just would have gone ahead and just replaced all the transmissions and just made sure that the peace of mind was there for the new owners of these vehicles. Everything else checked out just fine. And I did have the oil replaced at 5,000 miles. Again, I did not have any analysis done because I just didn't have time to arrange all that while I was traveling. I did have to pay for the oil change. That was about $100. At the 10,000 mile service, that will be included so I won't have to pay for it then, but because I wanted to do it early, I did have to pay. It all took about an hour, so no problems there. 
And then as far as gas mileage goes, on the way to Toyota and back, I got 23 miles per gallon, which I thought was pretty good. But basically we're still sitting, as you saw, around that 19.3, 19.4 overall miles per gallon, which is almost two miles per gallon better than when I had the tent on top. So that's nice. I might've expected to be a little bit better than that, but we'll see what happens in the next month or so as I'm hanging out here in my hometown at a much lower elevation, just see if it changes and goes up or down. There'll be a lot more driving on slower speed highways. The whole trip back was basically at 80 miles an hour, which is definitely not gonna be where you're gonna get your best gas mileage. So again, we'll see what happens and update you on that as well. So that is the update right now. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so, and share this out with anybody who you might think would find it interesting. Thank you again for watching. Remember, live your life in beta, and we'll see you next time.